Do you want to know what to do instead of lecturing? Because lecturing is not effective. I will explain why. I'm Nicolene Peck and I teach parenting and good communication all over the world through the lens of the principle self-government. And in this video, we're going to be talking about lecturing and what you should do instead. <laughs> In this video, I'm going to share a true story from my life and somebody who has recovered from lecturing. And then we're going to talk about lecturing, what we hope to accomplish when we lecture people, and then what to do instead. All right, are you ready for a story from my life? My dad was a lecturer. I'm talking top of the line, first class lecturer, to the point that he could lecture almost the entire night long. And I know because I tested it. Now, there's something you need to know about lecture. Lecturing, it's not effective. Lecturing just makes a person power struggle with you. It is a type of power struggling technique. People lecture because they want to feel a person change or come their direction. So basically it's a way of wearing somebody down. It does feel very manipulative to the person on the listening end of the lecture. They feel like you're wasting their time. They feel like you are trying to control them and manipulate them. So you don't want to engage in lecturing. Now let me share this example. So my dad, who was a lecturer, um, he one time told me no for something. I can't remember what it was. Maybe I wanted to go do something with friends or something like that. Then I didn't want to accept that. I countered with, well, but why this and that and the other? And I remember I went into my room because I was frustrated and I started just like, I'm going to bed, right? A little power struggle. So he came in and he sat on my bed like a loving father and he decided he wasn't going to power struggle with me. He was going to talk to me about it. Well, his talk started as a talk, but turned into a really huge lecture, the biggest one I ever had in my life. So within the first 30 seconds, I knew my dad was right and I was wrong. In fact, I probably walked away from him because I knew he was right and I was wrong and I didn't really know how to express myself. But I did not admit it because I was strong-willed. And a strong-willed person does not want to admit when they're wrong, even if they know they're wrong. They like to just chew on the fact that they were wrong and then decide never to have that same experience again. That's what the strong-willed person does. Well, anyway, dad was going to convince me that I was wrong and that he was right and he was gonna carry on. Now, he was a debate coach. So if you can imagine what type of a lecture I had, it had all the proofs in it, all the things, right? That a debate coach would present to somebody if they're trying to convince them. And I decided to play with him. I remember I hit a point where I thought he's just going on and on. You know what? Let's see how long he can really go. So I decided to use my strong will in a very non-productive way and to see how long he would lecture. And what I found is that he probably would have gone the entire night, which actually tells me he cared a lot. People who lecture care a lot. So recognize that about yourself or your friend who happens to be a lecturer. So what happened when I made my dad go all night long? This is how I did it. So I decided that every time he said something that I knew was true, I was going to counter it in some way. I was going to present to him why I thought that wasn't exactly accurate. I was going to give him an exception to the rule or I was going to give him some sort of counter that made it so that I didn't have to exactly believe that. I would part way believe. I would egg him on, draw him in and see how long he would keep trying to convince me. The clock in my bedroom was just behind him. And so I could see the time ticking by. I knew that my father had to wake up at like 5 or 5.30 in the morning. So I kept him going saying, yeah, but I mean, I see that, but not really because of this. I kept him going until 2.30 a.m. And then I remember looking at the clock thinking, that's late enough. So then I looked at him, I said, you know, dad, you're right. I'm sorry, I think I, think I misunderstood, you're right. Okay, and he was like, oh, I'm so glad we had that good conversation. And you know what? He probably walked to his bed thinking it was worth it. My daughter respects my authority, she knows and she understands. I knew he was right way, way back. I was just playing a game with him. He would have gone the whole night. 
That's how much he cared about our relationship. So do people who lecture care? Usually. Some of them may like the sound of their own voice, but most of them do really want to do something that's good. So now what do we do instead of lecturing? Since it's really not effective, it seems manipulative, and it can even disconnect people who we're trying to connect to. Well, let's talk about that. But before we do, click the subscribe button. This channel has so much information that will help you so that you don't have to lecture and so that you can have effective communication with your family members. Click subscribe now. I am known all over the world for teaching the principles of self-government, which actually are taught in this book here, Parenting a House United. This is a best-selling book and it has really changed thousands and thousands of families over the years. So in this book, I talk about the ways that I talk to my children. In fact, I talk about how I prepare them to accept those words from me and that teaching. I talk about how I choose my words carefully and oftentimes stick to a script so that I don't fall into manipulating or so that I don't create more anxiety for my children. So when the family understands certain words that they need to say, when they have a script that they have prepared, then everyone has higher predictability, which means less anxiety. This is a great thing. As soon as a person starts lecturing, the anxiety goes up because now we don't know how long it will be. They have stopped listening to you. Now they're just wondering how long it will take before you're done. They feel ill used. So when I know what to say and I know my children know what I will say, we all have the same skills and understanding of those skills that saves tons of time. No more lectures. People can have changes of heart, changes of behavior quickly, and we can spend our time talking about things that we care about a whole lot more more than how somebody rolled their eyes or something like that. So let's talk about taking that time. I'm going to teach the skills, skills like following instructions, accepting no answers and criticism, accepting consequences, disagreeing appropriately. I'm also going to teach them my exact skills for correcting behaviors. I'm going to teach them something, for instance, like I'm going to describe what happened. I'm going to say, just now I gave you a no answer and you didn't look at me because step number one to accepting a no answer is to look at the person. So then I will do a description of what happened. Then I will explain why that's not a good idea. And I will usually do that in one to two steps sentences. Then I will say something like, when you choose not to look at me, I'm not sure if you heard me, which then makes me want to do more talking. Now see, they don't want the more talking, so that's a rationale that matters to them, right? So those first two steps of a correction, and those are just two of seven steps, help me not lecture to my child. So then when I tell them what they should have done, that's step number three, I say what you should have done was you should have looked at me because that's the first step of accepting a no answer. And then you should have kept a calm face, voice, and body, said okay, or asked to disagree appropriately, and dropped the subject. Now I'm gonna go on from my correction from there. I'm gonna tell them what negative consequences they earned. We're gonna practice things the right way. There's gonna be some praises in there. This is how I correct the children. This stops me from lecturing about something. Do I need to hit some moral place every single time that they roll their eyes or don't look at me or don't follow through with something? No. They know when they haven't done it correctly. I just teach them the steps to the skills that they should have followed and then we just refer back to those steps to the skills and then touch the heart just a little bit with that one or two sentences that's in the rationale step. That's all you need. So how are you going to make sure that you really nail it without lecturing? Well, you might have to take a second before you actually do the correction and think out your words, especially if you're the type of person who thinks all their thoughts as they're speaking. Take a second, stop yourself and think, wait a second, what do I want to say here? What is the reason that would matter to them? What did they do? What should they have done? Those are the three main questions we have to ask ourselves. Then we engage in the conversation. Now correction is really powerful and the children learning those skills also super powerful. This prepares everyone for success. But there are other things that we can do preemptively to make sure that problems don't occur in the first place that we might get tempted to lecture about. So in the teaching family government system of parenting, I have certain things that we do ahead of time, such as we pre-teach all of the skills so everyone knows them. 
then we also have family meetings where we discuss problems we might be facing as a group and decide how the family will handle those problems as a group. We also have something called a family standard, which is where we handle things that might touch on some of our morals, things like how we're going to dress and not dress, and what words we will say and not say, what movies we'll watch or not watch, the ways that we'll spend our time, how we will interact with digital devices. All of these things are contained in the family standard. And when you have those things pre-taught to the children, then they automatically know the reason why you would tell them no for something. You just have to say, oh, that does not fit with our family standard, so I'm going to need to give you a no answer. Boom, it's done. You don't have to keep talking about it again and again. Now, sure, every once in a while, you might feel like you need to add a few additional bits of information, but by and large, the pre-teaching will make it so that you don't have to do the lecturing after the fact. I am just scratching the surface here on teaching self-government and you can see how teaching self-government is perfect for conquering lecturing. But did you know that almost any problem related to your family relationships can actually be solved because of the teaching self-government parenting system? I would like to help you know more about that and so I have created a free class that you can access on this channel. The class that you should go to next, the video that you should go to next is called the not so known secret for parenting success it is a full-length class that will give you a lot of the nuts and bolts you might be looking for to put this system in process click on the link now i'll see you there